Zechariah chapter 4. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. So Zechariah was sleeping. And said unto me, What seest thou? He just woke up. Let's see, you know, he's rubbing his eyes. And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereof and the seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. That almost looks like the candlestick that's in the temple. It's got seven prongs. On top of those prongs it's got seven bowls of, of the lamps. And it's got um, a bowl on the top of it. Like a reservoir kind of thing. I wouldn't know how to draw that. And two olive trees by it. Olive, olive oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It was the oil used for anointing the priests. One on the right side of the bowl and the other on the left side thereof. So the main frame of this vision is not the candlestick, it's this bowl. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? The angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. So I don't know why the angel was telling me, You don't know what this is? Were you supposed to know what this was? And then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord the bowl or the, or the candlestick this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying not by might you didn't do it by force you didn't do it by muscles not by power you know you you didn't have batteries. You didn't have the force be with you. But by my spirit, there's the trees, the olive trees, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, a flat place, a mountain becoming flat. That's the second advent. And he shall bring forth the headstone. That would be the top of a pyramid. Thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it, the headstone. It's Christ, Matthew 7, 24 and 25. We're picturing here the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Ezra 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 8, 4, 2, and 3, 5, 2, Nehemiah 7, 7. Now we're back on the earth where, where there is a temple. So rubble was built that foundation. His hands has uh, his hands shall also finish it. Uh oh, it's not finished yet. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has set me unto you. When that temple is finished, Zechariah, that's a sign. I've spoken to you. So <clears throat> verse six, Zerubbabel. Is the same one that lays the foundation of the temple of God. And in this vision it's seen, and I saw, verse 2, and I looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold. That was, there was a candlestick in the holy place. With a bowl upon the top of it. 
one Pacific bowl. And his seven lamps thereon. There were seven lamps, the candlestick, in the holy place. One in the center and three shootouts. You want to call it that. It's three branches. And seven pipes. That's the seven branches coming out, the pipes. They would be hollow and they would... They would and seven lamps. And on top of those pipes would be a bowl. And in the bowl there would be the oil used for the light with a wick. Which are upon the top thereof. The two olive trees by it. One on the, on, upon the right side of the bowl. There's that bowl above. I can understand the candlestick. But I don't understand this other bowl. And the other. The right side thereof. And the interpretation is. This is the word. Unto Zerubbabel. And Ezra, as they're building this temple, God is speaking to them. That star of David is not the sign of Israel. There are plenty of illustrations in the Bible, including this one, would be a great flag incense of the nation. It says in verse 10, for who has despised a day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the earth. Now we run into trouble. Because let's go back to chapter 3, verse 9. And behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Okay, we're looking at that headstone. Another problem. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 8. And I saw, and behold, a man ride upon a red horse. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. And behind him there were, there were red horses, speckled and white. Plural. And I said, Oh my Lord, what, be, what are these? Angel that talked with me said to me, I will show thee what these be. The man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And then they report back to the Lord. And then these are the, these are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and through through the whole earth. If the Lord would take the scale off your eyes, there would be mighty things to be seen that we cannot see. Sometimes drunken men and their illusions see some weird things. The realm of Satan and movies, cartoons, and books see weird things. This is a weird thing. And this is vision number seven. The golden uh, candlestick with the two olive trees. Now that's just a candlestick. Symbolize the holy place? I don't know. But somebody's watching. And somebody made a song one day. 
he's making a list and checking it twice to see who's naughty or nice. And they want you to think that's Santa Claus. But when it comes to, to God, even the Bible, the book of Job, God doesn't see us. He doesn't know what we're doing. And but very much alive because the eyes of the Lord are in every place. You're being watched. And it's not Martians. Man wants to take his image off God, so he put, oh, we'll go find life on Mars, and that's who's been watching us. It's not Mars. Now, something out there in outer space may be also watching us. But when you read the Bible, there's just some things that, when it comes to the eyes, it's totally weird because there's some things that have multiple eyes. And I can't explain it. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees? Wait, if that was me, Zach Ryan, but I haven't finished cutting the candlestick yet. You want to put it down in A, B, C? You know, uh, Mr. Angel, can you put down the, the illustration of the golden candlestick for dummies? <laughs> God is going to give us the revelation he wants us to get. Now, maybe two years, five years, or maybe never, God will say, hey, I want you to see something in Zechariah 4. But not yet. Not now. What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side there? Now, he says candlestick. Verse 3 says two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side. Zachariah's concern is the candlestick. The angel says the bowl. And then I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes Empty the golden oil out themselves. Okay, now. What be these two olive branches? They're trees. Verse 3. Which empty through the two golden pipes. The pipes are hollow. They're pipes. Olive branches, which are olive trees, in verse 11. There's branches going through the pipes. The oil is put into these pipes to empty the golden oil out of themselves. I gotta say it was weird because the branches don't produce the oil unless I don't know anything, which I don't know nothing about olive tree. But the olives pro provide the oil. In the book of Exodus or Leviticus, it says the olives to be beaten, the berries produce the oil. Here, the branches are providing. The oil needed for the lights. It didn't say the olives. It said the branches that threw the two golden pipes emptied the golden oil out themselves. That's the question Zachariah has. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And again, he says, No, my lord. Angel, you know. Don't you know? Why would he ask if he didn't know? And then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord 
of the whole earth. Wow. Because when I read John's revelation, before the throne are four and twenty elders and four beasts. And God the Father sitting on his throne and the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here there are two that stand by the Lord, capital L, small o, R, D. These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Who stood with the Lord of the whole earth in the Bible one day? Moses and Elijah. Who are the two anointed ones in the, in the tribulation? Moses and Elijah, spoken of as, I think Malachi says olives. Malachi, I believe I have it correct. It may not be Malachi. I'll go check real quick. Uh, maybe not Malachi. Maybe not Malachi. Speaks of Moses and Elijah, the last two men mentioned. Remember the law of Moses. Four, four, five. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Well, Moses and Elijah are mentioned, the last two men of the Bible and the Lord. I believe there's a place that mentions them as olives, I believe. There are two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. That's the, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are representation of Zerubbabel building this temple. And setting it back up. Moses prescribed by God the blueprints and the patterns thereof. Elijah represents all the prophets. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, the God, God's son, who is God, will walk in this temple one day, literally. And he'll go off to a mountain and be glorified and transformed as Moses and Liza show up to him, have a talk about his death. Other than that, let's look at Revelation 11 real quick. Revelation 11. I don't know how much light this can shed on it. Revelation 11. Zechariah is a weird book. And we could go, and we're, not, we're doing chapter by chapter. But if we were to break down verses and all that, we could spend weeks and months. And when we get to the Gospels, I don't think we're going to be able to do one chapter a night. We're going to break that down. It says in Revelation 11.3. I will give power unto my two witnesses. All right. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. Now look, here, here's where it is. This is what I was talking about now. These are the two olive trees. Oh boy. And two candlesticks. Wait a minute. We now, now we got trouble. Zechariah mentions one candlestick. Revelation mentions two. Standing before the God of the earth. Now match that back to Zechariah. Let's go back to Zechariah. Read what Zechariah says. Let 
These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord and whole earth. And I'll read again Revelation. These are the two olive trees. Matches the chapter. And the two candlesticks. Okay. Got the candlestick. But there's two. Standing before the God of the earth. That God of the earth is the big L, little O, little R, little D. Now, who can that be? It's got to be Jesus in his human nature. Remember, he's 100% man, he's 100% God, and yet he got sleepy. He got hungry. He was brought to tears. He had nowhere to lay his head. He had nowhere to, to be. He had no possessions but the clothes that were on his back. He got weary. He got upset. He sighed. He bled. And he died. Now, if you want a particular great passage, now that we looked up Revelation, I'm glad we did. You want a verse to throw a monkey wrench into Jehovah? I'm sorry for picking on the Jehovah Witnesses, but doesn't the Bible disprove them wrong? They profess not that Jesus Christ is not God. Revelation 11 and what we just read match. What do you do with a verse like that? It says God the whole earth, and then it says Lord of the whole earth. I guarantee a Jehovah Witness will say that little, that big L, small O, small R, small D. I guarantee they'll probably say that's Jesus. But if you go run that over to Revelation, I bet you they'll cock out. They'll stall their engines. Now, why does Revelation say two candlesticks and Zachariah says four? I'll tell you why. Because one says two and one says one. And when you run the cross references, then you see Moses and Elijah. They show up with Jesus Christ. They show up in the, in the, in the tribulation period. And they're called the two anointed ones. You know what Christ means? Christ means anointed. That day when Peter woke up and, and rubbed his eyes, he saw three anointed of God. The law, the prophets, and the creator, who is about to be the savior. And according to this verse here, what be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out themselves? Somehow, some way, Moses and Elijah are giving light. How can they do that? I'm glad we went to Revelation. Let's go back to 4, 2 again. What seest thou? And I said, the Lord just showed me something. I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, or whatever that bowl is, and his seven lamps thereof and seven pipes to the seven lamps. Which are upon the top thereof. Now this is. this. There is a candlestick. Seven prongs in the holy place. This one I don't know. The two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl. And the other upon the left side thereof. Not in the holy place. So I saw. So I answered and spake unto the angel. To talk to me saying. What are these my lord? Then the angel talked with me, answered, and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? Don't you have no idea, Zechariah? And I said, No, my lord. And he answered and said unto me, This is the word of the Lord on the Zerubbabel, saying, Now if it's Moses and Elijah, it is the law of Moses and the prophets speaking to Zerubbabel on how to build that temple and what's going to happen and what already has happened. It's got to be now. 
That word has to be. When, when Moses and Elijah showed up with Jesus Christ, they spoke of his death. What was it about? All right, Moses, yes, sir. Is all the law fulfilled in my life to go to Calvary? Yes, sir. Elijah, yes, sir. Have I fulfilled all the prophecies that were spoken about me, the first coming? Am I ready to go to Calvary? All the prophecies, Lord, have been fulfilled to this point. The word of the Lord has to be Moses and Elijah with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the word. Moses and Elijah is the Old Testament. Jesus Christ seals them both up into one whole book. So it would be a way that I would look at with Revelation 11 that we're, we are told that Ezra did not just build that temple. He built it by the word. He had Moses, the writing of Moses. What would be the what would be the prophet part of the temple? Where would you find Solomon's blueprints? Second Samuel? Wasn't that a prophet? There you go. The temple built by Ezra was according to the Bible. That, that's the only way it could be. And it was anointed. The spirit of no of Moses and, and Elijah was over the building that it has to be that and shed light to the Jews on how to build it. Look at that. Scripture with scripture. In other words, they didn't come up with their own plan. They didn't come up with their own there. They did what the scriptures told them to do. They used the Bible. They used Moses and they used Elijah, the prophet, to build that temple. And over that temple being built was the Lord and the Bible, which they had complete. 